revenue that we made in the year 2023 was a few things about being a content creator the 1 million subscriber channel now without actually earning any income out of youtube hi everyone hope you're all doing great in this video we are going to be setting up a home office all these years we have been working in the living room in the bedroom and at the dining table while this has been okay for casual work there were always disturbances and distractions affecting our focus as we take on more video and other freelance projects we need better technology to edit higher quality videos we wanted to set up a space with sufficient lighting and stable wi-fi connection lastly Focused work requires a bigger monitor and proper seating to avoid back and neck pain. Hence, we decided to convert our spare bedroom into our home office. After that, we're going to get into talking and sharing about our YouTube journey over the past couple of years, how we got started with this channel, what were we doing before this, how life has been as content creators, do we make enough money through it and so many other questions that you guys had for us. So we'll get into all of that but first let's set up the workspace. This is our guest bedroom. We got rid of the cot to create enough space to set up our home office. I'm first tackling the wall against which we're going to have our desk. So here I wanted some design element and I was thinking a pin-up board. Now for a pin-up board, I'm going to be using just these thermocol sheets and covering it with this really pretty contact paper. It's a very easy and simple hack because this is also very renter friendly. I can just put it up with the help of some masking tape or command tape. Moving on, the next is the computer table itself. This is just too small for us currently and we decided to extend it in an innovative manner by making our own wall mounted folding table. And for that we are just using this plank of plywood we already have at home and covering it up with this wood grain contact paper so that everything looks seamless and then we are using these wall brackets to mount it on the wall. These brackets are special brackets with the help of which you can fold down the table when not in use and just pull it up whenever you need it. So there it is we have this really stylish yet functional home office setup and we can get work done here uninterrupted and without distractions. How do you guys like it? Do let me know in the comment section. And now we have come to that part of the video where we are going to get into talking about our YouTube journey and answering all the questions you guys had for us. But before we get started let me just formally introduce us. So I'm Anusha and you see me in most of the videos and this is my husband who is behind the camera most of the time. Hello everyone, this is Kamlesh. So let's get started. The first question is also something that we get asked pretty often and that is what is the equipment that we use for filming as well as what are the softwares we use for post-production. So we'll get started with the filming aspect and since he does most of the camera work, I'll let him take this one. So for filming, we have been using a Canon N50 Mark II camera. It is a very basic mirrorless camera, but it has worked very well for us over the last three years. We have topped it up with a Sigma Prime lens, a 16mm lens. This is to get better cinematic quality footage rather than just using the kit lens. As a secondary camera, we use an iPhone XS. It is a 5-6 year old phone. Uh, again, we use this only for vertical footage and sometimes when we need an ad additional camera. And when it comes to audio devices, we use the Saramonic Lab mic and we actually have two sets of this. So it comes as a mic as well as a receiver. And we have two sets so that we can do such videos where both our audios are very clear. We also use a gimbal. Again, it is a very basic gimbal, a Xeon M2 crane. So we've had like mixed results with this gimbal. With the phone, it seems to work okay. But when it comes to using a camera on the gimbal, it struggles to give like stable footage. A lot of these equipments are rather expensive so we will upgrade as we upskill as well. So right now we have pretty basic equipment and we are slowly doing our upgrading. So when it comes to post production, I have always been using the Dell XPS 13 inch laptop since the start of this channel and I absolutely love the laptop. It's never let us down. We do a lot of heavy editing on it and if I have to say just one thing that you know it's a little limiting it's the fact that it has a small display so it kind of causes a lot of strain on my eyes and on my neck when i work and this is something that we wanted to tackle with better technology so about a month or ago we decided to upgrade to a bigger monitor and that's when we got this 27 inch viewsonic monitor that you see in the background 
it makes editing so much easier now especially because not only is it big but it also gives us quad 2k hd resolution which means we see things so much more brightly and clearly now and really it's just such a better cinematic experience for us even as we edit it also helps me do video calls and conference calls with my freelance clients in a comfortable manner thanks to its 5 megapixel camera and led fill lights the pop-up design camera ensures good privacy as well the monitor offers two-way AI-powered audio enhancement and mic noise reduction, which is essential when you work with a young baby at home. The monitor offers superior ergonomics as its position can be adjusted for height as well as viewing angle. Hence, both my husband and I can share the same monitor and alter the height as per our needs. This webcam docking monitor comes with multiple ports like HDMI, USB, etc. to connect any device while displaying audiovisual and transfer data, all with a single cable. But the best part is the Type-C port with charge pack that helps me charge my laptop from the monitor rather than needing to find another charging point for it. This also helps me keep the desk clutter-free with fewer cables. The docking also comes with an Ethernet port which means we get uninterrupted Wi-Fi without needing an additional plugin that goes into our laptop. So that's about it for our equipment. So if any of you creators out there or want to get started on your YouTube journey, you're wondering if you have the right equipment as most big creators and uh, people who have been on YouTube say, get started with whatever you have and you can slowly upgrade your equipment, better technology as you upskill as well. So that's what we would say as well. Now that we're done with talking about equipment, let's look at the softwares we use in post-production. For editing, we use Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. We were surprised that it is a free tool because it comes loaded with features. For all our requirements from long form editing to short form editing, we've been using DaVinci Resolve. It has a lot of features that you know you can really get very deep into editing, be it text, be it your audio, be it your color correction. There's everything to learn there, be it animation. It's just in terms of VFX, special effects, fusion that is called. Uh, so you can get into it if you are willing to learn. There are expensive paid softwares out there, but for, as small creators starting out, it's always nice to have a free tool like this on the market, which still has depth that you can learn so much and create really fantastic videos with it and i know there are a couple of people i follow on instagram like sam colder who has extensive programs where he teaches people how to edit very slick videos using davinci resolve so that's there and when it comes to editing things like our thumbnails which again a lot of people ask in the comment section where do you edit your thumbnails we use a free tool an online free tool again called canva which i'm sure a lot of you already know about again loaded with features free version also has plenty of features elements animations and so on that you can use so these are the two use two tools that we use in post production so now that we've spoken about the tech part and the softwares, it's time to let you guys know our professional backgrounds because people have asked us in the comment section if we come from a design background, are we interior designers and so on. So I started out my career as a digital media planner and I was eventually in marketing teams where I took care of the content strategy, social media strategy. Uh, digital marketing and so on for a variety of startup brands and I continue to do that on a freelance basis even now. My background is nothing to do with media. I've always been a data guy. I started out way back in banking related data analytics and then I worked with multiple other organizations, small, medium, startups, big organizations across India and Southeast Asia, mostly Indonesia and Singapore. Uh, the last two years, I decided to take a career break, spend more time with family and so on. But I do some freelance and consulting projects on the side while spending a lot of time on Nest Artfully, mostly behind the camera, but also have started doing editing in the recent past. Moving on to the next question, which is how and why did we start a YouTube channel? It again kind of ties back to my uh, actual job back then and that was related to social media strategy so on a brand side i was only able to experiment so much with these platforms i so would create personal pages and try to experiment and learn from that 
and I had pages on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn and Pinterest so on but never on YouTube. So YouTube is a whole different ball game and that's why I wanted to actually try it out. I wanted to learn editing, learn to make uh, long format videos and that's how I told Cam that we would start a YouTube channel and he was very supportive of it and that's how it got started. So the next question is how do you grow your channel organically and how do you keep creating the content you do? What's your growth journey been like? So in terms of the organic growth itself, I'll break it down as what we've come to realize that there are four things that needs to be looked at. First one is authenticity and the second one is consistency. The third one is strategy and the fourth one is being willing and adapting to change very quickly. So I will talk about authenticity first because that's something I feel strongly about. Only create the content that you are very interested in because the interest will bring about the passion to continue working and will also bring a certain kind of knowledge which is worth sharing. When it comes to strategy, I say strategy is very important because the reason our channel even exists at the, any stage that it is today is because we strategized very early on. In fact, the second video that we did took off and that was because we were looking for strategies to improve thumbnail and title in a way that our content was more discoverable. We changed the title from something very boring to something interesting and suddenly a lot of people related to it because they had the same issue and that's why they watched our video and that's why they subscribed to our channel. So these are the two things from my side. The third thing that we think is important is on the consistency which is also an area where we could have been better. Uh, for example, the first six months we did many videos, quite regular, almost one video every week. And we were able to see good amount of traction, both subscriber growth as well as the overall number of viewership and so on. But later we had a lot of challenges. For example, we had health issues, we were moving countries, we moved to Goa, then from Goa we shifted to Bangalore then we had pregnancy and so on. All of these things that we wanted to prioritize over everything else, including YouTube, because of which we lost some consistency and also our growth also plateaued. Uh, now this year, we think we are in a better position. We will be able to make videos more regularly and that will help us to regain our growth. Yes, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. And the last part, again, uh, something that uh, we could have done better is on adapting to change. In fact, a lot of uh, platforms from YouTube to uh, Instagram have moved towards short form video content. And a lot of creators who have moved there have seen good amount of success. But we continue to do long form videos because we enjoyed that. But we should have also listened to what audience want. And based on that, if we had changed our strategy and started doing a lot more short form content, the growth could have been better. But again, this year we plan to do some amount of short form videos as well. Correct, correct. I think experimenting is the key. So to keep trying something new and to keep innovating and to not give up so easily that I've done this, it's not worked for me, so I'm just going to give up. So what if you've done 100 videos? So what if you've done 200? You could do 300 videos and finally crack it and figure it out. So that's pretty much what social media is. Someone also asked us, how do you stick to doing the content you do without compromising on the quality? And you repeatedly put those videos out there. I think one is the authenticity, which we just spoke about, where we do what we love to do. So it is a natural process. And two, um, Cam here is quite the stickler for perfection. <laughs> He wants the audio to be perfect, there shouldn't be any disturbance, there shouldn't be noise. Uh, if there's a shot that's blurry, he's not happy with it. So things like that, you know, he takes quite a bit of passion in the videography aspect of it, the filming aspect of it. We could have actually just gone handheld, kept the phone with us and, you know, like done a very, very casual sort of filming style. But he enjoyed this process of trying to go that extra mile. And I think we've not even gone all the way, right? There's still a lot left to learn, but we enjoy the process, so we do it. Yeah. And also we've continuously invested our time in upskilling ourselves. Uh, like I said, I've never used a DSLR camera before. Because we were starting the YouTube channel, I learned quite a bit on how to use the camera and so on. Similarly, she has also upskilled a lot on editing and other skills that are important to make good quality videos. We continue to invest some time as much as possible to upscale ourselves. I think uh, one point we'd like to note here is that we've also been uh, rewarded 
for being consistent with the kind of content we do and with the quality because even though we are a small channel we've been noticed by brands and we've been fortunate enough to get some projects interesting projects to work on so that's been nice all right moving on to the next question which is about the creative process itself in the beginning the creative process was very random i had about 40 odd ideas these are things that i wanted to do at my own home so they i would just execute and then record it but now we've got in categories that we typically try to ideate within like the diy category is just one small bucket then there's styling makeovers home tours there are things like how tos and so many other things and we are continuously trying to add to this so that it doesn't get very repetitive for our audience and that they get maximum amount of inspiring content and useful content as well so that's an ongoing process yeah in fact as we are moving into our new apartment we are also in the process of doing a lot of research around what materials to use what kind of new design techniques to follow and so on so in this process we are meeting a lot of vendors and we are also trying to see if some of that can be converted into videos as well right so in fact uh, whatever is the creative process for our own home ends up being in a way content ideas for the channel as well so that in a way real life is being shown there but even other than that we try to see if we are going to do long form and short form content what should we do on long form versus what should we be typically showing on short form where people can get quick value so these are things it's a creative process it's ongoing and we still at the end of it try to stick to what we enjoy okay the next question that we have is about uh, where how do you generate ideas for the videos and about the creative blocks have you faced any issues with that so idea generation like initially was a one man job i used to just come up with ideas and because he was not really from any sort of design background he would just think okay she knows best let's just go with it but i think we've evolved over a period of time where he has some strong opinions himself now and he pushes back so now it's a team effort we brainstorm on ideas uh, we brainstorm from couple of angles one the doability or rather the feasibility for us can we do it uh, two is it of any use for the audience should we even be recording and showcasing it and three in terms of time what kind of time frame are we looking at so if it's something that is going to take over a year to show or something like that we typically tend to avoid we've not done anything like that where we've re- recorded things over time but uh, other than that the process is pretty much the same we still stick to the overall category which is home design diys and all of this related information when it comes to creative blocks definitely we have hit so many road blocks i can't even count anymore uh, there's uh, there's always and i think it's true for most creators you have a high and then you have a very low period where not, nothing you do seems to work out and it's happened to us and you question everything you do but i think like he said in one of the previous questions that's where consistency comes into play because it's again like any other skill you keep doing it and then you get better at it and then you crack it in terms of staying motivated i would say that uh, it is our only motivation comes from the fact that at some point of it we enjoy it even with all the stress associated with it we enjoy a nice home we enjoy creating video content and we enjoy sharing it the other question that we get asked is how do you manage to create content with two kids around <laughs> uh, the truth is we are not very consistent we try to prioritize our kids over creating content that's why we have been quite erratic over the last year two years now what do you mean we try we definitely prioritize our kids over creating content <laughs> uh now this year onwards we have decided to take some help so we have employed someone to help with the baby so that way we will be able to take some time off and record during the times when the baby is asleep and also we don't do full time work anymore so that gives us some amount of time to focus on creating content i think if we did a lot of a lot more casual content where we're just recording our day to day life we are where we are comfortable showing our personal lives our children it would be a lot easier but that's not at all what our content is it's very structured and uh, we keep our kids out of it we try to maintain audio and video quality so we definitely need external help to be able to continue to do that Before we get to the last section there's one more question that people have asked me on my DM in Instagram I got these questions from young moms new moms and that is how do you take care of a baby and still uh, follow your passion and create content so my reply is 
it's it's very easy to be ambitious and want to be in multiple places at the same time because the truth is that life happens simultaneously a lot of things happen but that being said i would still for my own self i prioritized my parenting journey over anything else and the main reason for that is that there is a very small time period where they're absolutely dependent on you and want you and i don't want to miss out on having that experience and enjoying that experience because very soon they grown and they don't want to hang around you all the time anymore and i don't want to regret whereas not creating content for 2 3 years and then being able to create content i'm not going to regret because i could have started as a youtuber 10 years ago when youtube started and become a 1 million subscriber channel now but there's no point in thinking like that you start when you start and you can still grow and become whatever it is that you want to become so that's something i wanted to put out there so the next question is about how do we maintain our house how does it look the way it does light fabrics and so on and also how we stay motivated uh the truth is our house is not very clean all the time we also struggle to keep our house clean like i'm sure everybody else does we do two things one is we have taken help we have taken we have employed people who can help us with cleaning the house especially after the baby the second one is when we shoot we try to spend our time in cleaning up the place making sure that the place is clean and that is not how the place would have looked like say 2 hours before the shoot and neither would it look like that after the shoot so that's the truth so the thing is uh, it's called staging right you stage a space for shoot because our content is not as mentioned earlier it's not showcasing our uh, absolute raw lifestyle it's about creating a certain kind of inspiring content around design so then we have to create that setup which is not possible or feasible with children on a 24/7 basis so the house tends to get messy but as a couple we've always liked to live in a well designed space it's not about how much money we've spent it's about how much thought it that has gone into it and while we've had gone through periods of chaos during our kids uh, growing years we've also found that we eventually tell them the things that we prefer to do in our home like not eat while watching tv on the couch and not letting our kids scribble on the wall so these are things that in the long run they also learn and they also start appreciating a well designed space so eventually it becomes feasible for us to have kids and still create a good looking home the other thing about motivation is that uh, when the house is really messy what motivates me to clean is that under all that mess i know something beautiful exists because we've done it up so i know how it can look with just a little bit of effort and that's what keeps me going so we've now come to the section that a lot of people are usually curious about when it comes to youtubers and that is the commercial aspect of it what is the revenue we generate via youtube how much money we make is it enough is it a full time career option and so on so we'll get started with how much money we make off youtube and the revenue that we made in the year 2023 was rupees 84000 only <laughs> so just to put things in perspective this is around the amount i was earning as my monthly salary about a decade ago and that's all money we made in an entire year from youtube it's also not to say that everybody will be making similar amounts obviously we were not at all consistent with content that year so despite that i would say we made that money is how i would put it yeah uh, so the revenue that uh, she was talking about is only the youtube ads revenue uh, apart from this there are also other channels of revenue that we have started making because of youtube and i will talk about that as well the first one is obviously amazon affiliate income we initially we, we were not very keen on pursuing this but we saw that a lot of our users were asking for product links and that is how we ended up setting up an amazon affiliate account and it gives us some amount of good passive income we earn a small commission when you make a purchase through those links okay. and there is no extra cost to the users yeah. so it is like a win win for both the channel as well as for the users the second is brand sponsorship uh when we started growing and reached like about 15000 20000 subscribers brands started reaching out to us to create sponsored content we were very choosy about the brands we like to work with brands that we personally use or that is very relevant to the channel the content or the audience that's a good source of income 
that can help subsidize cost of running the channel and it can become a good revenue stream as well so when it comes to brand sponsorships what he means when he says choosy and what we use is that we still stick to within the home space we want to keep the sponsorship and the integration as organic to the content we create as possible and not like a stand out thing and so we try to do that uh, so that has limited the number of campaigns we've got also but we've been okay with that from a monetization perspective i won't say we've been very aggressive at all and then besides the affiliate and the brand sponsorships which are the obvious methods after youtube ad revenue we've also noticed that as a creator your youtube channel can become your portfolio so if you are a video creator you are some kind of an artist uh, so it becomes your public portfolio which brands also end up saying marketing teams take a look so they know that this is your style of storytelling this is your area of expertise this is how you make your videos and then they start approaching you for certain things like user generated content which is something that's booming now and you can create content that's not going to sit on your profile itself but is going to actually be given to the brand and the brand will utilize this so many creators that i know have also started doing this we've also started getting these opportunities now even things like amazon also does things like amazon lives which again i've started doing so these are additional streams of income and they wouldn't exist if not for the fact that we created our YouTube channel. And lastly, I think uh, we've also received something surprising, which is people asking us to help with the design of their home. Now, I don't come from a background of interior design, but I would never hire an interior designer to do up my own home simply because I would like the flexibility to do it my way and to do it over a period of time without having the financial crunch of having to spend an entire amount in one shot. Now, that being said, I think a lot of other people also are in a similar boat. So they end up reaching us and asking us if we can help them. We can't help them with execution at this point, but we can help with the design itself. We can create renders. We can give uh, design ideas that a local carpenter or any of the usual brands that uh, deal with modular furniture, where they also have a custom carpentry section, can help you with. So this is something we can do. Again, this is not something we've openly spoken about in any other video. We've not put it in the bio or anything, but we thought we should talk about it because we've gotten a couple of projects that way as well. So the last question is about YouTube as a full-time career itself. Uh, we, for example, have not treated YouTube as a full-time career, at least till this point in time. We have had full-time careers till about two years back. And most of the assets and lifestyle that we created was through our salaries only, right? And the revenue that we earn from YouTube is not enough to fund our lifestyle at this point in time. Maybe at some point it will, but I'm sure there are a lot of other big creators who have earned that kind of money yeah. and have done it as a full-time career. Of course. Now, if you were to do it as a full-time career, I think you should definitely look at what life stage you are in. Can you go for one year, two year without actually earning any income out of YouTube and still continue to produce content on a day to day basis? Right. I think if you are ready for that, then you can definitely take right. it up. Because YouTube, as with a lot of freelance jobs uh, or even more so, uh, revenue and money works on a rotation basis. So what you work and put out today, you will get paid for 45 to 60 days later. So you should have a pipeline that supports payment of bills. You cannot wait 60 days to pay your rent or anything else. So that is the real reality behind this and people should be aware of it. But other than that, yes, uh, if you are someone, again, even if you're young, but you don't have responsibilities, like you're not already having a home loan or you're not paying, a, paying off an educational loan or something, you're free, then you can still experiment. Uh, we were at a stage where we were already married and we already had home loans so we stuck to our jobs till we cleared all of that and we got to a point where we were comfortable taking a sabbatical and doing this. And from here on we still take uh, making money seriously because while money is not everything it's definitely needed on a very practical basis. So we will see if our effort here can also help us generate a decent income and if not then we will get creative we will get innovative and do other things because youtube or social media is not the only way you know to earn an income so we will still be looking at other things where our professional connections are and look at that 
but for now we enjoy this process and this year we are wholly committed to trying and creating better content on the channel and see how things shape up for us in continuation to the work life balance i also want to put out there that a lot of people romanticize the life of social media content creators and i was there as well i've romanticized their lives as well but now that i'm on the other side i can say uh, that it's always the case of grass is greener on the other side so now that i've seen both sides uh, there are few things about being a content creator that people should know about one is that if you were to work in an office you have a separate workspace and a separate home space and these typically don't blur but when you are a content creator your home also becomes your office and it personal and professional life becomes very blurry the other is that your time is also kind of blurred because you end up working weekends and weekdays whereas when you typically work for a company you try to not do that and the third is that certain perks that you get like your insurance cover or things like this which the company takes care of and it's not even something you overtly worry about even your tax filing and returns is now something that you really need to pay attention to and you need to protect and cover yourself so these are things that you have to think about and the life stage you are in we are at a far later stage i would say we are not so young that we still have not bought our first home or our first car and so on we did all of that with our careers and money made from that so we are in a stage where we are actually able to experiment we wouldn't have done this uh, maybe with the kind of confidence we have now at a younger stage <laughs> that was our raw and real youtube journey and we try to answer all the questions as honestly as possible if you have any other questions for us after watching this video leave it in the comment section we'll definitely get back to you so here's hoping that uh, you stay with us for the rest of the year and uh, find our content useful if you have content ideas for us leave that in the comment section as well we always appreciate constructive feedback and we will turn around on that thank you so much for watching as always take care and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>